So this is a very exciting problem from ISI entrance 2020. It's objective problem number 8. We will learn about a concept from combinatorics called recursion. In fact, I will talk about the broad problem solving strategy so that you can apply this idea in other problems. Now let's look at the statement of this particular problem. We have a set of natural numbers 1, 2, up to n. n is a positive integer greater than 0. We define a n to be the number of subsets with no consecutive numbers. Subsets with no consecutive numbers are very special. They are not any subset. So we call them good subsets. Let me give you an example. Suppose we have this subset, uh, we have this set 1, 2. Then the good subsets of this particular set are the singleton set 1, the singleton set 2 and phi that is the empty set. Notice that none of these sets have any consecutive number. Now let's look at this particular subset 1, 2. The set 1, 2 is a subset of itself. But it is not good because it contains two consecutive numbers. So A2 is equal to 3 because there are three subsets that are good. Right? Now let me tell you what the problem asks us to do. We want to prove that An is equal to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2. Of course, in the original exam, this was an objective problem. So, this was one of the options. But I redesigned the problem as a proof based question. Now, let's look at the recursive formula that we are supposed to prove. A n is equal to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2. Why do I call it a recursive formula? Because the nth term, the nth term is computed as a sum of the previous two terms. As opposed to a recursive formula, we have analytical formulas. For example, Tn is equal to 2 to the power n is an analytical formula. Why is that? Because if you plug in the value of n equals to 5, you will directly get the value of T5. But here, if you want to find out the value of A5, in our question, if you want to find out the value of A5, you would have to find out the value of a1, a2, a3, a4 and then by adding a3 and a4 you will get a5. Of course, to get a3 and a4 you will have to find out a1 and a2. So, it's not a direct formula, it's a recursive formula. It depends on the previous terms. Now, how do you look at a recursive formula? This is not only true for this particular problem, it is true for any problem of this type. So let me tell you how to think about this sort of formulas. Thinking about recursive formulas. We have a n is equals to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2. You would like to think a n as total number of cases. This term 
In fact, each of the terms on the right hand side will be sum of the subcases. Sum of subcases of the subcases. And they are mutually exclusive and exhaustive. What does that mean? Mutually exclusive means the subcases here and the subcases here will be logically distinct. They will have no overlaps. And exhaustive means these two together should constitute all the cases. That's how you should think about recursive formulas. The left hand side is always all the cases. The pieces in the right hand side will be the mutually exclusive subcases. So let's apply this strategy in this particular problem. I'll go to a new page. So AN is good subsets of 1 to N. Now if you want to make good subsets of 1 to N, they can be of two types. N itself is a member of the good subset of good subset N is not a member of good subset so N is a member of the good subset and is not a member of the good subset think about it any good subset of 1 to n, any good subset of 1 to n will fall in these two categories. Either n will be a member of that good subset or n will not be a member of the good subset. So they are mutually exclusive. Both of them cannot simultaneously happen. We cannot have a good subset in which n is a member and n is not a member, right? So that's why they are mutually exclusive and they are exhaustive because any good subset, any good subset of this 1 to n will fall under one of these two categories. Either n is a member of that or n is not a member of that. Now see, if n is not a member of, a, of that good subset, then we have to create that good subset from the numbers 1 to n minus 1, right? Because n is not a member, so that good subset of this one contains these numbers. But this is precisely a n minus 1 because it is the number of good subsets from of the, of the set containing 1, 2 up to n minus 1. Okay, now what about this left hand side? If n is a member of the good subset, so let's put n there. I'm constructing a good subset here. So let's put n there. n is a member. So clearly, n minus 1 is not a member, right? Because we are not allowed to have consecutive numbers. n minus 1 is not there. So from 1 to n minus 2, we have to choose the remaining members without choosing anything consecutive. But that's precisely what a n minus 2 is. Right? So this first case is a n minus 2 and the second case is a n minus 1. So that's exactly what we wanted. A n, that is all cases is equal to a n minus 1 when n is not a member of the good subset plus a n minus 2 
when n is a member a member of the good subset okay so now there is a very interesting connection of this problem with a very well known sequence of numbers notice that a2 is 3 right we have already found that a2 is 3 let's check a1 so a1 means we have to just look at the set 1 and compute the good subsets of this particular set but the good subsets of this particular set are 1 and 5 the empty set so a1 is 2 so because there are two good subsets of this particular set so a1 is 2 a2 is 3 now we have already proven the recursive relation so a3 is 5 which is 2 plus 3 5 a4 is 8 now in the comment section can you tell me what famous sequence this reminds you of this is such a beautiful connection between combinatorics and sequences of numbers and number theory. Can you tell me in the comment section what sequence this reminds you of? Thank you for watching this video. Keep on doing great mathematics. If you like this sort of videos, please care to like and subscribe and share this video with your friends. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.